My name is Robin McCollum, and I'm the president of the Miramichi Salmon Association. My name is Antonio Sullivan. I'm um, a postdoctoral fellow at the University of New Brunswick, and I'm also a uh, president of, of Sullivan Eagle Hydraulics. Enhancing strategic cold water pools and thermal refuge sites is one of the ways we can immediately make a difference to protect and sustain Atlantic salmon on the Miramichi. There's a number of ways that cold water can get to the Miramichi River, whether it's through brooks or streams or tributaries or groundwater. Anton likes to say that old water is cold water. And so we want to make sure that all of these inputs are protected, that they're clean and can easily get to the river stem to make the most impact for Atlantic salmon. Behavioral thermal regulation in salmon is, is really fascinating because they're ectotherms. They need to regulate their temperature uh, based on their surrounding environment and conditions and habitat. So during stressful warm water conditions, especially in the summer, salmon need to move to thermal refuges or cold water areas in order to bring down their stress and be more comfortable. If these fish are stressed, uh, they end up spending more energy towards uh, surviving rather than um, maybe for females production to of eggs um, and for males I guess it just takes less energy for sperm but yeah so basically um, you want to reduce the stress on the fish as much as possible and then that will hopefully um, translate into more um, spawning on the red. And so by having cold water pools um, with throughout the watershed Atlantic salmon can move to these protected areas bring down their stress levels and thermal regulate. Our work is focused on selecting strategic cold water pools for restoration for Atlantic salmon. This site was included in our long-term study and restoration efforts based on its ideal structure and cold water inputs and based on years of data throughout the Miramichi River watershed, but really selecting Black Brook for its ideal structure. Black Brook, it's, uh, it's located in, the, in, a, in a geologic unit called the Maritime Plains. Uh, so this is a 200 to 300 million year old bedrock is very shallow as well so the bedrock's very close to the surface it's hyper fractured so in that bedrock it can hold a lot of water and what we have when you go back up the brook there is very steeply incised channels and with these deeply incised channels they, they cut into the groundwater flow pass and what that does is the deeper you go down for the groundwater the the less range you'll have in the temperature uh, through time so for instance um, there's brooks that we've studied on the canes that don't freeze in the winter time because the groundwater is about six, six degrees Celsius all year long. In the specific case at the Black Brook restoration site, a delta was forming. It's been forming for years now. Basically the movement of gravel and sediment building up and really impacting how uh, cold water input moves into the river stem. This increases the velocity in the water and it negatively impacts Atlantic salmon in that it's more biologically costly for Atlantic salmon to stay in those cold water pools. And by using more energy, it impacts our overall health and stress levels. What we're trying to do is reduce the amount of energy these fish have to spend in the river and then hopefully that will uh, allow more energy towards um, uh, egg development and everything like that. So less energy expenditure, good for fish. That's what we're trying to do in essence. Fortunately for the Miramichi Salmon Association, Dr. O'Sullivan had been considering this project for a while because of the unique features at Black Brook Salmon Club. So once funding was secured in 2022, Dr. O'Sullivan conducted site visits, obtained necessary permits, and worked with the nearby Black Brook Salmon Club to implement the project in 2022. However, this project was able to happen fairly quickly because of his extensive background on the Miramichi and support of guides and members of the Black Brook Salmon Club. The goal with this is uh, we've, we've published a couple of papers on this recently, uh, my, my, my team and I, and we're finding that there's specific hydraulic regimes that are optimal or Goldilocks zones um, for salmon. Um, so what we've done here is we've placed boulders throughout this reach and within the thermal refuge itself, um, and their function is to act as hydraulic refuges on top of that thermal refuge. So again, go back to the energy expenditure, the less amount of energy spent for the fish, the better. Um, and then of course we stage these boulders in the main stem itself as well. Um, so closer to the brook here, excuse me, closer to the, to the central thread where there's no boulders. We have, we know that from thermal imagery. So we've put boulders in here. So now these fish have hydraulic refuges during normal water conditions as well. Um, also the fishing should be pretty good there as well. So it's a bigger, a bit of a bonus. So overall, these actions assisted cold water inputs to get to the thermal refuge for fish without much mixing of the warmer river water. We're using materials that are um, readily available in the river here um, and, and the boulders again. So we place boulders, which will be naturally in the river anyway, it's a, a glaciated landscape. Um, so put boulders out there and fish will, will gravitate towards them. And just as an in instance here, there's a seam out here 
Um, we put a dozen bowlers out there yesterday and within 20 minutes there was fish breaking around them. So again, that's, it, it was a specific depth and a specific velocity. So that gives you a turbulence regime and then you can drop the bowler in there and that will attract the fish in because it's less energetically expen uh, expensive. Every aspect of this design was attempting to work with nature to increase longevity of the project design, although we'll always be at the mercy of Mother Nature. The way the boulders were placed, riffles constructed, and a deflection bar incorporated were all meant to buy time and work with the way the river flows. Monitoring for this project is twofold. We are conducting pre and post construction monitoring through temperature readings, snorkel surveys, and drone based imagery. The Miramichi Salmon Association has also committed to ongoing maintenance and monitoring work, much like our other cold water restoration sites. We visit each year, take temperature readings, remove debris, conduct cleanup, and ensure the site is doing what it was designed to do, which is to get cold water back to the Miramichi River. Again, Black Brook have been phenomenal. They've allowed us to study this area for the last two years and we've learned an awful, awful lot out of it. Um, as long as Black Brook are happy to have us here, I'd like to keep on coming back and looking at this area, flying it with drones, um, looking at the thermal plume. Um, we also have, a, a, so this is, if I take off my O'Sullivan Eco Hydraulics hat and I put on my scientist hat for a moment, um, Professor Tommy Nazari and I have gotten some really um, high-end LiDAR sensors that we're going to try and use here to see what fish do. And we also have underwater cameras that we can use um, We've been using them for quite a while now to see how often the fish uh, come into these plumes um, and what temperatures drive it. Funding for this project was provided by the Canada Nature Fund for Aquatic Species at Risk and the Miramichi Salmon Association. In-kind support was offered from the Blackbrook Salmon Club, the University of New Brunswick, the Canadian Rivers Institute and O'Sullivan Eco Hydraulics Incorporated. I'd like to make special mention of the lads driving Dunbar Construction, driving the machines here. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this without them, so thank you so much to them. Clay English on the, on the machine is an absolute weapon. This project will directly protect native fish species, including Atlantic salmon, by providing refuge in the face of climate change and warming river temperatures. Our members support these efforts as they can see the difference that we're making. In the face of climate change, this is a tangible action we can take to help salmon and other native fish species on the Miramichi River. We appreciate the funding support offered from groups like the Canada Nature Fund for Aquatic Species at Risk, and we're looking forward to our next sites.